Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love for you to elaborate on the formula for getting famous. But before we do that, I actually want to push back on your very USB, your reason for being, or reason for fame being, anyway. Making B2B brands famous. Shouldn't B2B brands simply be focused on selling products and being profitable? So my answer to your question is, yes, you're totally right. Then the follow-up question to that is, what is the best way for B2B brands to sell their stuff profitably? Them being known or them being famous in their specific niche is in theory going to significantly reduce customer acquisition cost through any channel. If people know you, then when your SDRs are doing the cold email and they get the reply being like, yeah, I heard about you guys from somewhere. Let's jump on a call. Do you know what I mean? Ads, SDRs, partnerships, any acquisition strategy is amplified by fame, which is really just being known in a specific niche. So that does lead nicely onto the formula. The best case study of this is Taylor Swift. Two steps, very simple. Step one, create a lot of really good content in a specific niche. Step two is just be seen around other famous people in that niche. So Taylor Swift started off in the country music game, started very early. She started making these tunes at like 12 because her dad and mum were in country music, got really good. By the time she's 16, she's banging out sick country music tunes. So she gets really good at that. And then all she does is go and feature on other country music artists' albums or have them feature on her songs. She then moved to Nashville just so she could be seen around the famous country music people. And then why Taylor is such a great example is because she then switches when she's 22 to do this exact same thing, but in pop music. So it gets really good, consistently creating awesome content in that niche. And then it's seen around other famous people in the niche, whether she goes on other people's songs or they come on her songs. That is exactly what we recommend that any B2B company does. I won't comport myself, I can't. I fall for you, don't fly. I love the concept. With that being said, we're about to drop you on a deserted island. This is Desert Island Marketer. You've got a laptop, you've got an internet connection, and you have a budget of $1,000 a month. That's all you get, buddy. That's all you get. How are you going to help a B2B brand go to market? Yeah, okay. We're gonna follow the fame formula. Step one is we're gonna decide on the niche or the sub niche that we want to become famous in. Just to illustrate how I would do this, let's say the client we were working with created email marketing software. We could in theory have three potential niches. One, which is the most broad would be marketing. Second most broad would be email marketing. And then the third, which I would propose is the best option to go for would be a sub niche within email marketing, which would be email marketing open rates. The reason we're choosing that is because we are constrained by budget. It's going to be quite hard if you don't have an existing audience going to be famous in the world of marketing or even email marketing because we'll be up against much bigger players and so we're going to get famous in the world of email marketing open rates we decided on the niche now we're just going to be starting creating content which is step one and then step two is we're going to be seen around other famous people in the niche but to combine both of those things creating content with other people we're going to hit off both of these points of the fame formula then the question is what's the best format of information to create where we can do both of those so let's just run through them there's really four formats writing image video audio writing i don't think is the best because i don't know you're going to get them to write a guest blog post for you like that no one does that it takes ages or you're going to write a blog post and get them to add text into it it sounds like a bit of a nightmare image you could co-collab on infographics together again it sounds like a bit of a nightmare so actually audio and video probably the best the easiest way to do this we're going to start a show called the email marketing open rate show we're going to have someone from the business a person with the best communication skills and ideally deep knowledge in the world of open rates we're going to start the show so anybody googling email marketing open rates ideally we'd start to pop up there maybe later in the year and then we're just going to find the top 12 most famous people in the world of open rates we're going to bring them on the show we're then going to have an awesome 
interview. We're going to break out all the content, distribute it everywhere, have the guests share. And over the 12 months, then most people in the world of email marketing open rates will be aware of our brand. And so when they're searching for software that's going to help them increase their marketing open rates, then they'll come to us. One final caveat is that ideally we do want to choose the niche that aligns with our product, right? So we have email marketing software, but maybe we just have an extra feature that MailChimp doesn't have that allows you to, I don't know, split test email like open rates. And so we're going to choose the niche that aligns with our competitive advantage, right? So that we are targeting people that are more likely to be able to I find value from our product. Myself, I I fall for you, don't flat. I fall for you, don't flat. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no,